There's a proverb that states, a fool and his money are soon parted. And in this video, we're gonna talk about a whole bunch of fools that are keen on parting the main fool from his money. And the, the point of this video is to make damn sure that nobody watching this video, not my subscribers, surely you won't be the fool above all fools and buy this book for a foolish amount of money. Before we get too much farther, if you wanna win some free comics, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment this video, and you're entered to win two free slabs this month. And head over to BriceComics.com, sign up for the newsletter, you're entered to win two free slabs over there as well. We also uh, always have code COLLECT10 active on the website. Tons of awesome inventory at BriceComics.com. Go check it out. All right, here we go, folks. So I was recently perusing Comic Link's uh, upcoming auction, or current auction that's going on now, uh, doing a little shopping for the PC. And it dawned on me that there is a lot of personal research and work that, that I put in before I buy a book for my personal collection. I thought, why haven't I done a video on this? So stay tuned for a future video where I'm just gonna go through my process of, of you know picking a book and everything I do to look at the price, to look at the quality of the book, to consider resell, to consider that specific copy, a whole slew of things that I look at before I actually make a purchase. And uh, I saw a bunch of these 9-8 white page Neil Adams covers, which you don't see a whole lot. Some, some truly remarkable books in this auction. And then this book caught my eye, Transformers, number one in a 9.9. .9. And I, I'm just shocked at what's going on here and what continues to go on. So as you can see, let me zoom in here. This is graded at a 9.9 .9 white. First of all, amazing book, awesome cover by Bill Sienkiewicz, origin and first appearance of the Autobots and the Decepticons. But what the heck is going on here? Look at that. This, this book apparently is known to have this defect on the back cover, which is referred to as a chad. And I just thought, man, that's crazy that a book with that big of a chad still got the 9.9, .9, but it doesn't end there. Let's flip over to the back cover. What the, what the heck? First of all, there's, there's the chad. You can see this, look at this ripple of an edge just in this top corner. I mean, how in the world can a book get a 9.9 .9 with that bad of an edge? But if you look even further, it's got this massive miscut. I mean, this is a significant miscut. Borderline in a 9.8. .8. Maybe you can get a 9.8 .8 with a miscut like that, but when you combine it with the chad on the top edge and this miscut and all of this color loss here on this edge, look at this edge. I mean, this is this edge maybe in a 9.8 if that's all that is. But when you combine it with this, now we're down to a 9.6. Then you combine it with this miscut, I think we're down to a 9.4 at best. And it doesn't stop there. It just keeps, there's, you know, regular, there's like a little bit of, of wear here around the staple and on the front cover we have the bindery tear at the top which is allowed in 9.8 at the top and the bottom but it's the combined effect of all of these defects that absolutely no possible way is this book actually a 9.9 .9. it's just a mistake because mistakes happen in grading mistakes happen and sometimes it's a happy little mistake like Bob Ross would say check out this happy little mistake here on the computer Hulk number 11 in a 7.6 so for those that aren't familiar with the grading scale there is no 7.6 it goes 7.0 7.5 8.0 8.5 but there is no 7.6 so this was clearly just a mistake and clearly the book is actually uh, supposed to be a 7.5 and this is actually a book of a friend of mine. The book itself is only worth about $40, uh, but it's just a happy little mistake. In this situation, um, he reached out to me and he knows that I love uh, the Hulk magazine, the art on it, and I have this one here. He thought, you know, maybe this would fit in with my collection and asked me, would I be interested in buying it? And I said, yes, I, I am interested in buying it. In fact, I'll give you $100 for it. The book's only worth $40. And he was like, you know what? I'll just keep it for that. And I don't blame him. I mean, it, maybe it's worth more than that, but 
But in this situation, you're absolutely buying the label and not the book. And I'm okay with that to an extent. You know, if it's a fun little mistake, I would love to buy this label as a 7.6 and say, I have the only 7.6 in the world of this book. It's just a cute, happy little mistake. Just a mistake. They accidentally put 7.6. And when I called CGC and asked them about it, they said, yeah, it was graded a 7.6. The grader wrote 7.6 and the person typing in the computer typed in 7.6 and it went out. It just missed all the little points of quality control and got out as 7.6. No harm, no foul. This book's only worth uh, 40 bucks. But when you go to a book like this, this book is massive in a 9.9 .9 because there's only four known examples in the world. Let's just take a moment to read this absurd little commentary here by Comic Link. This ultra rare mint 9.9. I just, I just can't imagine the person, I'm hoping that the person who wrote this didn't see the book. They just saw it and they're just writing it, but they didn't see the actual book because there is no way you can with a straight face look at this copy, this 9.9, .9, and write this commentary. Say this ultra rare Mint 9.9 .9 is the highest graded that CGC has ever certified for Transformers number one and is one of only four examples ever assigned this virtually perfect top grade. I mean, how could you say that with a straight face if you've seen this? I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that whoever wrote this just wrote it based off of you know the title and didn't see the actual book this 1984 premiere issue blah 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 as of writing this 6500 examples have been certified by cgc so the 499s make up less than one tenth of one percent of the overall population of cgc graded examples it has been over three years since we have sold an example of this issue it sold in february 2021 for forty four thousand dollars so if we type in this certain number and hop over here to CGC, do a little detective work here, see when it was graded. It was graded in uh, December of 2021, about three years ago. If I was a betting man, I would bet money that whoever got this graded instantly sent it to Comic Link to be sold, and they sold this copy for $44,000 three years ago, if I was a betting man. We don't know for sure if this was the actual copy that Comic Link sold, that they said they sold. They said it has been over three years since we have sold an example of this issue. And then they go on to say it sold in our February sale for 44000 So it doesn't say definitively if this is the actual copy that sold for 44000 And there's no way to check because they don't allow past auctions to be searched. Like it's just something that they don't offer and it's not tracked by GP analysis. In fact, if we head over to GP analysis and look at Transformers number one, you can see that there's only one recorded sale of a 99 that was in 2010. So that definitely wasn't this uh, copy because this copy was graded in 2021. We can see that a 9.8 is currently selling for around $1,200, and this book is sitting at $2,600, but there's almost seven days left in the auction. So please come along with me, track this book. Let's see what the ultimate fool pays for this book because this was a mistake, folks. And here's how I know it was a mistake. I called CGC and asked them, I, I just, I was surprised that they offered up this information, but I said, hey, is there any way to check between what a grader graded the book at and then what it was entered into the system at? So I said, for example, if a book was graded a 9.0 and the grader wrote 9.0, and then when it went to get entered into the system by the, the admin person, if they accidentally put 9.9 .9 instead of 9.0, is there any way to corroborate the two things, what the grader actually graded at and and what it was actually entered in the system and she said yeah let me look up the cert number so she looked up the cert number and they have a bunch of extra information that is not available to the public i gave her the cert number she pulled it up she says yeah it was graded a 9.9 .9. and she said i see two notes here by the graders so the first grader said be very lenient on the back cover chad 9.8 if light Okay, that's what the first grader said. Be very lenient on the back cover Chad. It's common with this book, 9.8 if it's light. The second grader graded it 9.9. .9. That's that's what we know. That's what we know the thing is that the first grader said, you can give this a 9.8 if 
you think that Chad is very light. But well, they went ahead and gave him a 99, and that doesn't account for all of the other defects that we've looked at on this book. It was simply a mistake, folks. People make mistakes. People make mistakes. And, um, you know, like the 7.6, and it's just... It's just so clear that this is not a 9.9. But then the question becomes, at that point, I mean, if you are Comic Link in this situation and you look at this book, no, you do not sell it as a 9.9. If you were to send this back to CGC, there's you would be lucky to get a 9.8. It's probably more like a 9.6 or a 9.4. If you're watching this video the day it comes out, we have a massive Whatnot show tomorrow, Friday, starting at 4 p.m. Pacific time over on Whatnot. Link down below for $15 towards your first purchase. And I'll have stuff in the bite now for $15. $1 starts on vintage slabs and more. Your chance at a $1,000 store credit. Somebody hit it just recently. Recently, you could be next and I hope to see you there so to dive a little bit deeper into this because one of the things I wanted to know was like what else was this book submitted with it gives you just a little bit more information about the submission when CGC has a cert number these last two numbers uh, go, only go up to 25 so it'll be it'll start at 01 and then end at 25 so you can have up to 25 books in a submission so you can type in the cert number here and and you can see that this was the 14th book in this submission and if you type it over here into the cert number thing and backspace it one and go to uh, 13 this is the 13th book in this submission i just wanted to see what else was in this submission to see get more information so they had a saga of the swamp thing and a 9.6 that makes sense about the same era and about the same grade let's see what the 12th book in the submission was uh we have origin and first appearance of killer frost and firestorm 3 got a 9.6 you know uh, as about the same quality and grade. Let's see what the 11th book in this submission was. Machine Man number one, it came back a 9.4. I mean, not a big book by any stretch of the imagination. In fact, probably not even worth getting graded. So as you can see, it was just a normal Bronze Age submission. It wasn't like a box of Transformers number ones. And you don't even really need to do that extra little step of detective work to know that this was just simply a mistake. If this book was offered to me for sale, if somebody sent me pictures of this book and said hey are you interested in buying this 9.9 I would say absolutely not there is no price I would pay I can't touch this I can't sell this through my shop this isn't something that you know I can hang my hat on and say yeah yep this is 9.9 and you know you get into some really big money with 9.9s especially when they're ultra rare like this one of four stuff like that and you really you do have to pay attention and these auction houses comic link comic connect heritage all of them, without without exception, sell questionable books like this. I've done videos on it before, and at any given time, if you go and look at their auctions, you'll see a book, you'll go, that's a 9.8, or that was clearly damaged within the case. That was clearly damaged within the case. My point is that there's a level of responsibility that we have as dealers and sellers to not just sell any and everything, especially if it's something with high value and a lot of attention. I mean, it should be for every single book. Then there's a resource situation that comes into play there. But for these ultra high value ones, as dealers, we should reject some things. You don't just blindly sell everything as, a, as an auction house. You know, I think the temptation here on Comic Link's part is that they don't make their money until they commission a book. They can sign a book for sale. So if they were to churn away a 9.9, .9, essentially they're churning away the commission on $40,000. You know, integrity seems to be something that is coming up a lot right now in the community. Uh, in the following video, in Monday's video, we're going to talk about somebody who's uh, ripped me off for $700 and the integrity issues behind that and all of the stuff. And then we've got the thing going on with Hero Restoration, which we'll talk about more as well in Monday's video. And then stuff like this that happens all the time. And the point that I'm trying to make here is that we need to be wise collectors. You can't just blindly buy something, especially when it's big money. You have to do a little bit of your own research and detective work because a lot of these places aren't doing it for you and they're not protecting you as a customer. And so you need to take it into your own hands and know what to look for. That's what this channel is about. That's what we're here for, to make wiser investors, speculators, and collectors. So stay tuned for a future video when I just go through the process of buying books for my personal collection and what I look at because 
A lot of the books offered for sale on any one of the, the auction platforms, Comic Connect, Comic Link, and Heritage, I would reject personally a lot of those, or I would not buy them for various reasons. And I hope to see you tomorrow at our Whatnot show. And uh, don't forget those giveaways we have. If you subscribe, comment, and like, you're entered to win a free slab, and head over to BriceComics.com and sign up for the newsletter. You get entered to win a free slab over there as well. Tons of new inventory incoming as we speak. Collect responsibly. Don't be the fool. Thanks for sticking with me. Bye.